Welcome to the Elevate Everyday Podcast. My name is Cade Junkerth. I'm your host. And today I've got badass guests. We got Nick Townsend Smith on the podcast. And Nick has a super interesting background. Well, I'm super interested in it. Uh, we we connected on psychology. That's kind of his his background. Um, but it's organizational psych psychology, which I, I kind of looked up and I think it's super interesting. So I'll, I'll probably ask you a couple questions about that. Um, but he's you know got that background. He's an author, a coach, a podcaster. He's got his own podcast and YouTube channel, Wake Up with Giants TV. Um, but first and foremost, I appreciate you coming on the podcast, Nick. And I'm gonna go ahead and hop right into the first question. <clears throat> so right off of that, like, what is organizational psychology for for the listeners to to kind of understand a little bit more about that? We all kind of understand individual psychology, and that's the, the mental state of an individual and how to navigate that. Well, organizational is just at an organizational level. So it's the collective uh, psychology. And yeah. so it's looking at how things function. It's the industrial side of it. It's uh, making sure that people are able to work together. That's awesome. So, that's yeah. awesome. That seems very practical, like a very practical education to, to be able to put into place into the real world. So that's that's super interesting to me. Um, well, awesome. And, and so that, that's going to lead right into my, my next question. Um, you know, with your mission of like building a world of giants, I saw that's, that's what you have as your mission on, on your YouTube channel. You know, what does that mean? And how are you using organizational psychology to, to build a world of giants? Yeah, I actually went in another direction. Instead of focusing on the organizational side, I focus on the individual. So I take a holistic approach with people. But our mission is to impact 100 million lives globally. And when we say giant, what we mean is it's a metaphorical term that describes somebody that's going after their inner world. So they're, they're growing their inner world. They're looking at an abundant mindset. They're trying to find opportunities in the world. But more than anything, they're taking what's there and growing it into what it's capable of. 100%. 100%. So how can someone like kind of find their superpowers? Like, because you, you said, you know, using what's there um, and, and using that, like, how can someone really tap into that? Well, to understand what's already in there, uh, we've been equipped with 86 billion neurons, 85 billion glial cells. We, we can store up to 2.5 petabytes of information in the human brain. So we already have this capability to store just about anything we can imagine. The human brain can adapt to any environment. And the challenge that I think people face is that they think they don't have the brain for it. They don't think they have the ability to step into the mindset of a giant. Yeah. Um, and that's the problem is the thinking. And that goes back to their programming. It goes back to familial programming, uh, their proto value systems, their attitudes, beliefs, perceptions about the world. So if we can start to shift that, and help them to recognize that they're already equipped with everything they're going to need to be anything they can imagine. Now we can start to rewrite those stories so that they can actually step into that. And so really there's a lot of letting go of those old stories and patterns. For sure. Yeah. I think there's so many people that <clears throat> they, they think they don't have uh, the potential to, to reach their goals. They're, like you said, they, they don't think they have like the brain power, the genetics, whatever it may be. Maybe they've been told their whole life that they they weren't, you know, except excelling in school, getting great grades, and it kind of just like oppressed them. Um, so I, I think a lot of people just have these limiting beliefs that are holding themselves back. Um, so what what common limiting beliefs do you see um, a lot of people having that that kind of hold them back? What, what's kind of some some common well, ones that you see? Limiting beliefs, a lot of times it's worthiness, deservingness. It's usually where it stems from. Uh, a good friend of mine and mentor, Townsend Wardlaw, said that anytime you believe anything, it becomes limiting by the nature of believing it. You're just boxing in the universe and, and saying that's it. The word belief comes from the Germanic Galauben, which means to hold dear. And if you go back to Hebraic terms, it used to mean trust. So we just don't trust things. So we don't trust that we can do it. We don't trust that um, we, we can set out and create what we have in mind. And so some of these limiting beliefs are I'm not deserving of it. I can't do it. I'm not like other people. I don't have the brain or the mind for it. These are all limiting in nature just by the speaking of them. I mean, I feel disempowered even saying those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, it's really powerful. It, it can be really powerful when someone is able to overcome that. I know for myself, you know, I, I definitely had limiting beliefs um, that were holding me back. And you know, sometimes you don't realize it till till later on. But it's you know, it's it's kind of figuring out how to overcome these things. Um, and sometimes when you do that, you unlock just this crazy amount of growth um, when you yeah. can pass that. So what what steps can people take to to kind of build a new identity and and overcome some of these limiting beliefs they have like say maybe they don't even know they're aware of these limiting beliefs but but what steps can people take to to start making progress and overcome these yeah, we use a framework so we use what's called the 12 journeys framework and uh you can see that at 12 journeys coaching.com but it's a it's a framework where we focus in on the root journeys first and there are six steps inside of that. First one is recognizing that we all have some version of a non-conscious state of being. It's an automation that we've created over time and the brain will support anything. It doesn't care what you put in there. So when you start to realize that the brain has the ability to automate anything, then you can start to work with the brain and wake up to that. The first step in change is, is awareness. That's the first step in transformation. So if you don't know you do it, there's nothing to do. But once you become aware of it, too many of us move into judgment and justification for our ways of being. And as, as soon as you move into justification and judgment, then you stop learning. So there's no way to grow from it. So what we teach people to do is to really be gentle with what's going on inside of them. There's enough shame and judgment and blame and guilt in the world. We don't need to add that to it. Instead, what we want to do is have compassion for it, have some understanding for it. Uh, people pursue things like perfection so that they can be accepted. Uh, we move them more towards the, the work of Herbert Simon, the Nobel Prize winner. He said, you know, if you can satisfy things, that satisfying the need is sufficient for the task. It's good enough. Uh, if you can do good enough, you can actually outperform people that seek perfection. And so even the word perfection, the Latin perfecere means to perform and to complete. And so if you're performing it, you're finishing it. Well, that's a form of perfection. That's a form of satisfying. So we move from awareness, and I'll, I'll be efficient with this, into feeling your feelings, because the journey of great, uh, grief is all about feeling the heavier emotions. And too many of us have our emotions invalidated by ourselves and by others. And so we don't allow ourselves to feel. And we teach people to really feel their feelings fully so that they can express those, because as they express them, they can heal those. And then we move into the journey of acceptance, which is all about acknowledging what is, not resisting your life as it is, uh, and then move into gratitude and empowerment tools to elevate you even more. So we're trying to move you from those heavier, lower state emotions up to the higher levels so that when we move into the growth journeys, you're, you're prepared to see it because otherwise you just can't see the abundance that surrounds you. It's already there. You just can't see it. Yeah, for sure. And that, that's speaking to me really, it's like hitting home for me uh, because yeah, you know, I won't get too personal with it, but I'm yeah. There's something a little bit rough earlier this week, um, and and it's just like that's something that I've been seeing a lot um, on on social media and things like that is actually letting yourself feel your emotions, not just bottling it all down, because that's something I've always did for a long time. Was just like you know I'm, I'm just gonna suppress all this. Like if I'm going through something tough, like you know just just try to push through it and ignore it. Um, but what I've found is if, if you just face it head on, you don't ignore it. Um, and then you're able to, like you said, you know, kind of use those emotions and those feelings um, and, and turn it into something that's going to serve you or like turn it into something that like if you can shift your mindset from, all right, well, I'm feeling these things. I'm not going to ignore it. I'm going to recognize that I feel these things, um, reflect on it, you know, sit with those emotions, but also take the steps towards staying in a positive mindset um, and, and shifting towards gratitude um, and empowerment and just seeing what the next steps are towards moving forward, um, then I, I think that's the best strategy. Instead of just trying to ignore it, um, you know, act like it's not there and just try to keep trudging through life. Because like you said, it, it can be super tough and it's almost like you got these blinders on where you can't see yeah. at times if you're, going, if you're going through something tough and stuff like that. Can we hang here for a minute? Is that okay? Or What's that? Can we hang here for a minute on these on this topic? For sure. Yeah. For sure. It, the the validating your emotions. We had a gentleman named Douglas Knoll on our show just recently, and he wrote the book Deescalate. So in 90 seconds, he teaches you how to deescalate your emotional state. And he works with prisoners, you know, murderers, people who are there for life. Yeah. He says that uh, most of these people wouldn't be in prison 
if they had their emotions validated, yeah. they wouldn't be there. They flat out wouldn't be. And, and we've been taught as a society for over 4,000 years to, to man up, to ignore our emotions, to just get after it, to, to be stoic in a way. Yeah. And it's killing our men. You know, and, and so it's really important that when you have an emotion that you validate it, you, you may be feeling sad. You could say something along the lines of, I am feeling sad. Yeah. I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling frustrated with, and you can talk about whatever it is. It doesn't mean that you're resigning to it. It just simply means that you're acknowledging and giving voice to it, and that expression elevates it. It releases those emotions. Instead of these emotions lasting 90 seconds in the body like they're supposed to, now we're we're dragging them out for decades. Yeah. And and they don't have to do that. So we can validate in others, like when they're telling us, I'm feeling sad, you can say, yeah, I hear that. You're feeling sad. You're feeling frustrated. You're it just validates what they're experiencing on the inside, and that releases those emotions. Plus the thinking that goes on beyond that. Lisa Feldman Barrett says that our our thoughts create our emotions. Our emotions are creations of the world, they're not expressions of the world. They're what we think is going on. And sometimes we don't even know it. I think that's super powerful what you said about it could last 90 seconds if we if we let it, like if we recognize it. <clears throat> but if we suppress it, it's crazy that, yeah, like if, if we suppress that 90 seconds, um, you know, it could have it could have been a short thing that we, you know, we could have felt the emotion, been aware, reflected, um, and then taken the steps towards, you know, feeling more positive emotions maybe. Um, but it sounds like, you know, when you suppress that, then it, then it's like, it just sits there. <laughs> right. It, it does. And the body scores it. The body keeps it in there and not, not just the mind, the whole body. Yeah. And so it's a, you know, the emotions are a full body thing. For sure. Yeah. And I think, you know, why it's hitting home for me. Like I literally had a moment at the gym yesterday where I was, I was trying to just push through it. And I was like, uh, I was working out. I was like, I'm just going to work out and forget about the, the emotions. I'm, I'm, feeling right now um right i was just trying to like push through and then it, and i had like a, a mindset shift during the workout where I, I basically thought to myself i'm gonna let myself be mad or sad or upset about what's going on um and then i'm gonna use it to my advantage and then just just the awareness like you said because that's the first step like the awareness of that it's there um and then being able to to kind of you know sit with that reflect not press it down um, but then, you know, for me, it, I was able to, to feel that. And then the, like, it was like probably halfway through my workout. And then I was able to use it as fuel, um, for, for the rest of my workout. So it, it was just really interesting to see that, like that mindset shift with myself yesterday. Um, so I don't know if that speaks to anything, um, with, with, with this for you, but that's just what, it, what, what's my mind is going for uh, it towards does. Barry, Barry McDonough, you know, he's the author of dare. He says that the moment you face your emotions, they tend to disappear on their own, that we're our biggest obstacles to our healing. And when we suppress these emotions, we avoid them. We don't want to talk about them. Others won't let us talk about them. Uh, then they stick around way too long. And then we become our emotional state. And that's what's expressing in our world. And so what you've done is is just essentially created a space of neutrality, neutralized the emotion by allowing space for it. And now it no longer holds power over you because you've created this room for it. And then from there, you can grow. Carl Rogers says that as soon as you can accept your life exactly as it is, then you can change it. Awesome. And too many of us are resistant. I don't want to feel these feelings. I don't want to think these thoughts. Right. But you are. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah. And I, I think that can be super powerful guys. I, I mean, you know, use this, use this last, I don't know, what was it? Five or 10 minutes, like put this in action in your, in your life right away. I mean, you know, just like the example I said yesterday, you know, if you're feeling something, don't just press it down, like recognize that it's there, but then use, use that to your advantage, use it as fuel or just kind of like, let, let yourself be with it um, and, and use that instead of just pressing it down and letting it last physically and mentally for for longer than it needs to so um but that's super powerful and then going back to to the identity thing though so now that we've kind of talked about that with with the emotions how can someone you know if they've got a certain identity with themselves like what we'll, we'll put it into to practical like in my world with the fitness world like say someone's thinks or has the identity that they're they're not an athlete like maybe they just 
they weren't, you know, athletic growing up and they're like, I'm not a fit person. It's just not who I am. They've got that limiting belief that they just, they can't get in shape. Maybe they've tried a diet or two um, that didn't work out for them. Um, like how, how can someone overcome some of these limiting beliefs and like this identity that they're, they're not a fit person and can't get in shape um, just to use that as an example. Um, but how, how can someone get past that? Maybe create a, a new belief system for themselves. Yeah. So, so first is to recognize that you have the old belief system and acknowledge that it's there and it's okay for it to be there. We don't have to get rid of it. If you think of the way the brain works is that uh, every, every time you create a new behavior, it's very clunky, like riding a bike. You're not very good at it. Nobody is. Yeah. But as you practice it, the brain supports it. So you have these things called oligodendrocytes, astrocytes, microglia that come in and support the brain so that it can be automated and more efficient. So the fastest neuron in the body is 268 miles per hour is how fast it goes. And the slowest is one mile per hour. But a lot of it depends on the efficiency of the myelin sheath that wraps the axon. And, and the more you do something, the more that automation happens and that speed comes into play. So to recognize that you've got years and decades of being a certain person, you're going to be really good at it. It's going to be a default nature. Yeah. So you're going to fall back. It's got gravity. It's got weight. So give yourself some freaking grace around the idea that you're going to go back to old patterns. See, we get into the, the space of toxic positivity and pretending like it's not there and being positive when we're really feeling negative, and that's denying our emotional state. So if you're feeling sad about not being able to be the person you want to be, well, just acknowledge the sadness. Acknowledge that you got the old thought patterns. We're talking about thought here. We're talking about judgments and assessments. And you think of how, how simple a thought is. You have 50,000 to 70,000 thoughts a day. And you hang on to about 45 a minute is what you hang on to. And so out of those 70% are going to be negative. The odds are pretty high that you're going to have some negative thoughts and go back to your old patterns. Yeah. So when you recognize it, general awareness is key. If you don't know where you're going, it's like Alice in Wonderland. Any path will do, right? So the first thing I would do with people is to declare who you want to be. The word declare, declaration, means to assert a commitment to be that. The word commit meaning to do and to assert meaning to speak. So you want to speak your commitment to be this thing. I'm not talking about affirmations. I'm talking about creating a commitment to come back to the new way of being. Because you spent decades building the old way of being. You're going to have to spend decades building the new way of being and give it time to actually habituate. Yep. It takes anywhere from 18 to 258 days to create a new habit. And so give yourself some time. Most people quit way too early. It takes 66 days on average to create a habit. And we're like, I wanna be this new thing and I'm committed to being this new thing. And we give it two days and we're like, this isn't working. And then we go back to the old patterns because it's easy and efficient. Right. So keep coming back to it until it automates. Yeah. That's how you create everything. So, but if you don't know who you're going to be, then you'll just, you'll react to life. The words reaction and creation are the same letters. They're just arranged differently. It's all about how you see it. So if you're going to create your life, create your life, write down on paper. I am this, I am that I am a fitness junkie. I am this, even if you're not, because it's a place to return to. So yeah, you're not going to be that some days. So when you wake up to that, come back to it and be that. That's awesome. Being is a practice of being. Right. Yeah. And I think that's really speaking to me and that's really powerful on the, the realization that, like you said, you, you've spent decades um, being a certain way. So give yourself some grace, realize that it's going to take some time to build new automations. Like you said, I think it's really cool thinking about it at, on a scientific level like that. Um, but like you said, I think there's ways to, to speed up that, that kind of like new automation, like creating those things. Like, like you said, writing those things down, like the, the act of journaling, like saying, I, you know, I'm going to be this person. That, that's been something that's been really powerful for me journaling. Um, and recently I've, I've started, I don't know if you're familiar with this. It seems like something you might, might've heard of. Um, have you heard of like the three, six, nine journal? Uh -huh. yeah. 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 So I, I think it's super powerful. So like writing three times in the morning, um, you know, one thing that you're trying to, to accomplish or like your, your new identity. So I've got something I've been writing. Um, I'll just go ahead and share it. I, I haven't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah please it. do. Yeah. yeah so basically I've been writing 
I will be the most impactful online fitness coach. So, so that's what I'm writing literally three times in the morning, six times in the afternoon, nine times in the evening. Can we, can we make that more powerful for you? I'm, I'm definitely open for, for Let, let's get a little ethereal here and woo woo a little bit is is universe einstein said that time is relative right we measure time the universe doesn't so when you say i will be something the universe doesn't know what to do with that so in physics quantum physics is like uh, all i know is the present so when you speak i am the world's greatest trainer fitness trainer versus i will be yeah. I will be keeps it future based and you'll never arrive at it. So always speak in the present moment. I am this now. Wow. I am this now. And you speak it as though if we were sitting in this room, you're describing the room to me, you're, you're being really clear about what this room looks like. I would understand where you are in this moment. So speak about your vision as though it already is always never as though it will be never as though it, you know, you can say it was, Oh yeah, I did that. Wow. But you want to speak it as I am this. Does that make sense? Yeah, I really appreciate that. And I, I think that that small detail right there that you pointed out, like that can be the difference of I'm pushing this thing off. Like this is just a future thing. As yeah. a, I, I'm acting right now um, to 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 be this because I'm saying I am this. So, wow, that's a, man. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm changing that yeah. to <laughs> so. and, and and notice how you'll show up is your your declaration to be something will be what does the doing so if i am that well then I, that expresses from you it's not where you it's never where you're going your visions aren't where you're going they're what are coming from you the acorn doesn't go find itself so it can become an oak tree it's already the oak tree it just expresses from the acorn you are already the thing that you're just you're claiming so now it needs to express. Does that make sense? So you'll pull in the nutrients and the things that would make that a reality right now. And your brain's going, uh, I need this. I'm missing this. You're not responsible for the how in your journey. You're responsible for holding the vision. Right. So we try and create our vision from how we're going to do it. That's not your job. Your job is to create the vision, hold on to that, and trust that the steps will appear yeah. for you to make that a reality. Interesting. So I'm, I'm curious for myself selfishly <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. where where can i learn more about some of these like you know quantum physics organizational psychology like kind of practical tips or you know just knowledge for myself on becoming educated even more on on being able to put this stuff into practice in my own life and my in my mindset you know we we've never had more access to information yeah in history AI, I use AI, I use chat GPT and, and uh, I use it to bounce ideas. And that's one source. You want to check your, your information and make sure it's accurate, uh, but it's one way to get started. Uh, and it's, and it's free to cheap to do. Yeah. Uh, YouTube is another way. I, I consume YouTube videos like crazy TikTok videos. I'll search certain things, certain topics. Um, I've got over 430 books in my library on audible you know, it's it, there. There's no limit to the information, so, so the information is not the problem. Yeah. But with with this specific topic, like maybe maybe yep. share with us a couple of books that are in your Audible that that you think are yeah. like good ones for this. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm listening to right now. Yeah. So you know, and and not necessarily organizational psychology. I have a degree in organizational psychology, but I'm so focused on the individual. Yeah. That so neurology. You know, it's not like stuff like that, like ways yeah. that almost like understand our brain more and being able to to use that to our advantage. Yeah, there's and I love communication, social communication, books like um, nonviolent communication, Deescalate by Douglas Knoll. He was just on our show. It's a great book. Get Out of Your Head by Jenny Allen. Uh, Any Works by Carl Rogers, if you want to learn how to talk to yourself and other people. Nice. Um, the Grieving Brain by Fr Mary Frances O'Connor. If people can understand how we grieve, then that'll help them navigate any emotions. Nice. Uh, Discipline is Destiny by Ryan Holiday. Another great one because it, it really comes down to discipline. Oh, Ryan, it, he's the stoic. Like right? Ryan Holiday, he's the guy that's all about stoicism. Yeah, it's interesting because there's a blend here, right? You, you yeah. pull what you need from each of these. So, um, 
the internal family systems is one of my favorites as far as understanding different parts. So you talked about ways of being. That's Richard Schwartz, and and this is his theory on on how things work that we develop these different parts to navigate our world. And uh, man, I could give you a list of you know hundreds of books to listen to and and just consume them but i love the works of carl rogers i love uh you know uh, lisa feldman barrett's work on anxiety and depression um barry mcdonough is one of my absolute favorites his book dare d-a-r-e is a killer book on on understanding anxiety and navigating it yeah. i think most of our issues are, are evolving or revolving around the emotions you know yeah for sure yeah and and I think a lot of people they just they don't even realize that it's that it's there. And I know we we talked about awareness, and I know you've already kind of talked about the steps. But yeah. so let me know if this is kind of a repetitive question. But you know, say someone just they they're kind of like walking around in an unconscious state that doesn't serve them. How how can we create like a better baseline or like a better unconscious state for ourselves? Like you know, I I know that we we're doing these things to work on our kind of like how we how we look at ourselves you know getting rid of some of these limiting beliefs um saying we are things with journaling and you know journaling some of this stuff out but uh, you know i think journaling can be super powerful maybe that's a way to to improve your unconscious kind of baseline state um but is there anything else that you feel like you can yeah. i mean i heard somebody on our show they said you know people are like a tube of toothpaste when you squeeze them they whoever they are on the inside comes out right and and so it really starts with what's on the inside what are you putting in there so if if you start feeding books podcasts like this into your body they can't help but ooze out of you yeah right thomas uh, or no einstein he would uh, he would just consume information then he his brain was smaller than most people's actually but his neocortex, the part of the brain that manipulates information, was bigger. So he would put information in into the storage and then manipulate it, yeah. right? And so what you manipulate in your brain depends on what you put in there. Yeah. And so, I mean, we have 250 interviews on, on Wake Up With Giants TV. We have over 600 uh, uploads of information that you can watch from workshops all the way down to interviews. You know, it's, it's like there's so much free information there's no reason for you not to be consuming it while you're working out. Listen to the, the podcast, listen to a book. Yeah. Um, journaling is a, is a great way to express and stay clear on your thinking. So it's a way to, to keep your attention focused, right? Right. There's also a power in writing it. Um, it. It tends to manifest a lot more quickly. Uh, hanging around different people. You know, if you have a mentor or a coach, that's a big thing. So somebody like you in your, in your life, where you can fall back and talk to that person about what you're experiencing helps you to get it expressed, helps you to get it out here so that you can heal it. I feel like we're equipped for healing, uh, but we're waiting to get rescued. You know, I think it was T. Harv Eker who said that uh, no one is coming to rescue you. Yeah. It was Nathaniel Brandon. No one is coming to rescue you. Yeah. You, man, uh, you, you got these quotes just <laughs> in your back pocket. <laughs> I, I, it's good. Uh, yeah, but I teach it constantly, so they're they're fresh, you know. And and I think that that's that's literally a testament to what you just said. It's like you're you're just you're consuming this this content, and it's just like it's in the forefront of your brain, as opposed to some people. What's in the forefront of their brain is these stupid TikTok videos <laughs> and, and stuff like that, because that's what I they're... love too. You know, I love the humor because <laughs> there there is a level of playfulness to this. We make it too serious and you need to play. You need to laugh. You need to watch a TikTok. There's nothing wrong with that. Listen to the music, dance. Like those, those are things that will elevate you more quickly because you're in a relaxed state, childlike state where you're ready to learn and play and explore. Yeah. So find ways to get playful. Right. Yeah. I think that's powerful too. Yeah. You got to have it in moderation, right? It's like, you, you can't just, you, you don't want to have too much of some things and you don't, you don't want to just like try to stay stifle some things down and, you know, allow yourself to enjoy some of those small things too, for sure. Do you want to hear an acronym? I mean, do we have time for that or yeah. uh, this is more for visioning. So when you're creating your, your outer world, um, but it's uh, the acronym is playful, right? And the P is for prepare the mind. And so we do that through the 12 journeys program that we run. 
Uh, but Buddha said the mind is everything, what you think you become. The L is lighten up. So we use journey of empowerment. We use laughter, games, um, you know, dancing, hanging out with friends. Those are things that will lighten you up. Einstein said that play is the highest form of research, right? A is assert your commitment to being. So create yourself like we just talked about. You got to assert who you're going to be inside of this. Life isn't about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. George Bernard Shaw. The why is yield to the journey of gratitude. That's the foundation of all abundance. Gratitude turns what we have into enough and more. That's from Melody Beattie. And gratitude helps you to see all of the things that are already around you that you can play with. F is for fascinate, which means to fixate on the vision. You want to create it so clearly that you have a memory of things yet to be. It hasn't happened yet, but you're already having the memories of it. Carl Sagan said, imagination will often carry us to the worlds that never were, but without it, we go nowhere. Right? The U is unleash emotion. So emotions are the language of the soul. They're the energetic bridge between thought and manifestation. And the final L is let it loose, surrender. To accomplish great things, we must not only act, but also dream, not only plan, but also believe from Antoli France. So all of these play together to, to surrender, to create, to expand, right? Yeah. And it's always a creation. Wow. Your, your, your life won't just drop in your lap. This isn't the lottery. Right. Yeah, that's, man, that is super powerful. I feel like I, I'm going to have to um, just reflect on that acronym <laughs> and just like yeah. see how i can like implement each of those those things in my life but that man that, that is really powerful i was just like my, my, my wheels are just turning from that <laughs> Good. That's cool. but sweet so um on the elevated everyday podcast nick we always you know want to empower the listeners to take action right away after listening to to the content on here um, and, and like you said, you know, I, I wanted to touch on this too. curating your content, um, you know, consuming the, the right things that can be super powerful. I think that, that I'm really glad you brought that up um, with the last question I asked um, to, to be able to curate your content and like, you know, trying to use social media and all the information we have out there these days to elevate yourself, you know, to, to improve um, I think that that can be a super powerful tool. It's like, you know, there's so much information, but if you're able to to kind of control the ag- algorithm, because sometimes it can push, you know, just what it's going to push at you, but it, it can become like an echo chamber of positive or negative, depending on the way you're kind of curating it. <clears throat> so I think that can be super powerful. I just wanted to make sure I touched on on that. I really loved your answer with that. Um, but on the, on the Love Day Everyday podcast, we're all about putting stuff into action right away after listening um, to this. So what is one practical thing or just like one habit that the listeners can put into action in their life after listening to this? What would you like to, to challenge the listeners to do? Number one is write down exactly where you are. Um, if, if I were going on a road trip, let's say I wanted to go to California from Utah, that's where I'm at. And I'm I'm not there to California yet, <clears throat> but I'm on the roadmap. Maybe I'm in Mesquite. I would want to know I'm in Mesquite. So I can estimate, you know, my distance and what I need to do to get to California. So first thing I would do is acknowledge where you're at. It's okay that you're not okay. It's okay that you're not where you thought you should be. Write it down. Like I am here. It's not resignation. It's just simply acknowledging where you are. It's the most powerful thing you can do. And be gentle with yourself about it. You are where you are right now. Do that first. Next. I would write down like you just declared on your 369 journal is where you're going, but not where you're going as a destination that you're already there. You're just not there yet. So you want to write it as though it's on the roadmap, but you want to write it as a future based thing. There's a gap between those two. What that's going to offer you is an opportunity to play with possibilities on how to create that. There are infinite ways that you can create where you are to where you will be in the future. And so, but to write both of those in the present tense, I am here and I'm also there, even though I'm not there yet. It's really confusing for people. That's, so that's, awesome. that's what I would say is, is get a sheet of paper out, right? Where you are and where you're going and never speak it as I'm going there, speak it as I am there, yeah. right? For sure. And then let your brain go to work to fill in the gaps. Yeah, it's like, I already have the tools to be this, um, but I, I'm just... I have to keep working on them. That's, that's kind of where the way I'm thinking about it, but yeah, 
I, I want to challenge that a little bit more because where my mind goes is like, you know, me saying I'm this, but I, I kind of know that I'm not, or like, yeah. I'm not where I want to be when I'm writing that. Um, you know, how does someone not get like overwhelmed or, or feel like, man, there's so much I have to do to be at that point, um, to feel like I am there. Like, how does someone, you know, feel, Love. feel confident about, you know, and feel okay with where they are if they're not feeling Steve like Jobs. they are there. Steve What's Jobs that? says you can't, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only do that looking backwards. You have to trust that the dots will connect. Charles Darwin said that it's not the survival of the fittest or the most intelligent, the most adaptable to change. Mm. And so your job isn't to know the pathway. Your job is to hold the vision. If I could see the pathway that it took for me to go from where I started back in 2009 to where I am today, and I had to see every step, every pathway that I took to get to where I am today, I never would have stepped. Yeah. It would have been too overwhelming. So there's a blessing in blindness. You've got to trust that every step you take is going to lead you toward that vision. You're not responsible for how you get there. You're responsible for holding the vision and stepping. Yeah. Like you said, you got to take action. And sometimes you don't know what the next step is. So take a step, take any step, any step will do. So it's, it's really trusting the process of getting you from where you are to where you desire to be. Right. Yeah. So, so that, that, that is the biggest thing is surrender the pathway. Let go of thinking you need to know how it's going to come about. Read the book. I, I won't swear, but it's called Riches F, right? Or Happy Pocket Full of Money. Mm -hmm. And read those books and, and look at how they talk about creating their visions and dreams. So those, those two books right there, um, you know, I don't know what we can get away with saying out here, but that book, Riches, as you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is is phenomenal because she talks about her process of moving from her her previous state to her current state hmm. and then the happy pocket full of money talks about writing five thousand things a five thousand things journal and i write that and as quick as i can write them they're coming true and i'm like holy crap how how is this even happening yeah. i'm writing them as though they are and then i'm i'm having to document because they're happening so quickly i'm like this is nobody's going to believe this <laughs> so I'm documenting imagery and pictures of checks and things like this that are just coming through. And it's like, I have no way to explain how that came about so quickly. Yeah. Right. Time is relative. Yeah. So, yeah. Let go of the how hold on to the vision and recognize where you are on the map. It's okay that you are where you are and there's nothing wrong with you writing your vision, even if it hasn't happened yet, even if you don't know how you're going to do it. Wow, man. I'm just like, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm having these, these mindset unlocks right now <laughs> from talking with yeah. you um and and one one place where my mind went as well just thinking on this while you were speaking is you know sometimes it's not taking action on things that we have to do but maybe it's taking action on, on things that we have to let go like thing things that we need to actually um you know remove from our lives or like things that maybe we're doing that aren't serving us that we need to get rid of so that's something that, that my mind was just going to, um, on that as well. It's like, you know, trust that you're going to take the steps to get there, but also listen to your gut along the way, you know, and every day when you're writing this stuff down, like I am this, this person, like, I, I think just the act of doing that, you're, you need to trust your gut and, and realize that there's certain things along the way too. Maybe we need to remove, um, yeah, to definitely part of the process. Yeah. Forgetting is a sign of a healthy mind yeah. and, um, you know, one, one more book that I hadn't mentioned, but it's the book that's the foundation for everything I do is The Giants and the Smalls, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's my that's my book. It's a metaphor. And I think when people realize the metaphor of their life, they can recreate that. Right. So that's that's really important. You know, they can see that at Giants and Smalls dot com or on Amazon. Awesome. But you really need to see yourself as a metaphor. You're speaking yourself into being. Yeah. Very interesting stuff, man. Well, um, what's what's next for you? Like, what are you what are you working on? Are you planning on writing another book? Like, what what's kind of in the works for you right yeah, now? I have a, another book called The Tortoise's Hair okay. that uh, we're, we're illustrating right now. It's another metaphor of of self acceptance and self love. Nice. Uh, that'll come out early next year. Uh, we have our Twelve Journeys training program, twelvejourneyscoaching.com, uh, and and that's our biggest push right now is doing corporate training. And uh, group training. We just did a retreat with a bunch of men here in Salt Lake City 
about two weeks ago it was powerful. So we use that as a framework. Um, really, we're just trying to create the giant mindset in as many people as we can. And, and so we have our tribe of giants, which is our Facebook group. And we have 4,200 members out there, highly active community, supportive community. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're just expanding one step at a time, just like the people watching this video. I don't know what the next steps are. I just know where I'm going. Awesome. Awesome, man. Well, I'm, I'm excited to, to kind of follow your journey. I'm glad I got to, got to know you a little bit on this podcast, sir. But, um, you know, where, where can people find you? I know you just mentioned, you know, your website earlier and, and the Facebook group, but where, where do you want to direct people to go to find you? Let's, let's do uh, YouTube, Wake yep. Up With Giants TV. That's the easiest one. You can see our podcast there, and then that'll connect you to everything else that we're doing. Awesome. Awesome. Yep. Sir. Well, I appreciate you coming on. Nick, I appreciate the listeners to, to listen to this one. Guys, but like I said, you know, we just, Nick just dropped some knowledge bombs on you guys and, and just dropped a ton of nuggets of knowledge that you can <clears throat> put into place and start making huge changes in your life. I know, I know that I'm going to be journaling today about this, about this conversation. Um, but, you know, take what you listen to on this, put it into action right away, like we said. So, um, but guys, I appreciate you listening. I appreciate you, Nick. Um, stay tuned. We got expert guests on the podcast every single week. So stay tuned for the next episode. And in the meantime, guys, elevate every damn day. Thank you. Peace. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.